In 2010, a man from Cuba by the name of Aroldis Chapman entered Major League Baseball. And there were glimpses of great potential in 2010 and 2011, but it was 2012 when Chapman truly introduced his full potential to the baseball world, or unleashed his full potential to the baseball world, rather. That's a better way of putting it. In 2012, the Dusty Baker-led Cincinnati Reds were a very good team, winning 97 games en route to their second National League Central Division win in three years. 2010 National League MVP and on-base machine Joey Votto was incredible, so was Jay Bruce and Todd Frazier, and as far as the starting rotation went, it was so reliable. Johnny Cueto led the way with a masterpiece of a season, the rest of the rotation ate up innings and was solid, and then came the bullpen. So take Johnny Cueto. Say he's out here dominating and carving up your lineup. He comes out of the game, but things aren't necessarily getting any easier, considering not a single Reds reliever had an ERA over 4 in 2012, while simultaneously having the scariest pitcher in baseball. In comes Aroldis Chapman. Like I said, 2012 was Chapman's coming out party. Wait, that sounded weird. Forget I ever said that. 2012 was the year Chapman's name became known to the world. In 68 games that year, Chapman threw 71 and two-thirds innings, struck out 122 hitters, all with an ERA of one and a half. Unfortunately for the Reds, after winning games one and two of the NLDS in San Francisco, the Giants went back to Cincinnati and won three in a row, winning the series and eventually going on to win the World Series. Chapman was only able to pitch a whole three innings that series. The season was over, and that was that. On to 2013. 2013 was another strong year for Cincinnati and Chapman, as they would 90 games, finishing third but clinching a wildcard spot to play in a wildcard game that they'd get stomped on by Pittsburgh, with Chapman, who had another dominant year, not being able to touch them out. Aroldis Chapman only got better, scarier, and more dominant. In 2014, Chapman threw 54 innings with an ERA right at 2, striking out 106 hitters, and in 2015, he threw 66 and a third innings to the tune of a 1.63 ERA, striking out 116 hitters and becoming an all-star for the fourth straight season. As for the Reds as a team, they only got worse. In 2014 and 2015, while Chapman was lighting it up on the mound, the Reds won 76 games and 64 games, respectively, and by 2016, the time had come. Execute trade Aroldis Chapman. In December of 2015, the Los Angeles Dodgers agreed to a deal with the Cincinnati Reds to trade for Chapman, but that's when some off-the-field drama surrounding Chapman came to light. On October 30th, 2015, after a party with friends and family taking place at Chapman's house in Florida, Aroldis got into a heated argument with his girlfriend after she apparently found a message on his phone that she did not like. According to the girlfriend, Chapman choked her and pushed her against a wall. To this day, it's not really clear if that was true, because the very same woman wasn't very cooperative with the police, even telling authorities she didn't recall saying that Chapman actually struck her. Chapman himself strongly denied ever choking or hitting her, but something he did do that was proven was shooting a gun. According to the woman, she had heard a gunshot, with police verifying that a shotgun had been fired eight times in Chapman's garage. Nobody was hit by any of these gunshots, but this was all still a pretty disturbing incident and disturbing enough to make the Dodgers call the trade off and decide not to deal for the flamethrowing left-hander. So, a red he remained, but not for long. Not long after Christmas, the Yankees swooped in and worked out a deal to acquire a role as Chapman, and after serving his 30-game suspension, off his Yankee career began. Chapman, of course, was incredible, but the Yankees were not, so he'd get traded. Again, this time to the Chicago Cubs, and he'd pitch even better in the second half, pitching to an ERA right around 1 in 26 and 2 thirds innings, striking out 46 hitters. He'd close out the NLDS, close out the NLCS, the World Series arrived, Rajah Davis said hi, and ruined Chapman's chance at closing out a championship, but the Cubs prevailed anyway, winning it all in 2016. Little did we all know at the time, but this was actually the start of a bit of a pattern for Chapman, as far as his postseason appearances went. Immediately after the ring was won, Chapman became a free agent, and where would he sign? back with the Yankees on the largest contract for a reliever in history, getting $86 million over the course of five years and off his Yankee career resumed. 
In 2017, Chapman wasn't necessarily as good as advertised, but he was still a threat out of that Yankee bullpen, going on to help the Yankees clinch a wild card spot, win the wild card game, with Chapman going on to close out the ALDS, taking down Cleveland in five games. Overall, Chapman actually had a really good 2017 postseason, but unfortunately for the Yankees, they lose in seven to Houston. In 2018, the Yankees, with the help of Aroldis Chapman, would win 100 games, but weren't in the postseason for that long, losing to the Red Sox in four. None of it was Chapman's fault, someone who threw three shutout innings, but on to 2019 it was, and that's when I believe Aroldis Chapman's legacy started to go downhill. In 2019, Chapman became an all-star for the second time as a Yankee, going out to help the Yankees win the AL East division, sweep the Twins, and back to Houston they'd go for a rematch. Up until Game 6 of the ALCS, Aroldis Chapman was having a really nice postseason, throwing two and two-thirds shutout innings in the ALDS against Minnesota and two shutout innings against the Astros in the ALCS. But then came Jose Altuve. In the bottom of the ninth inning in Game 6 of the ALCS, Jose Altuve would connect on a slider from Chapman, hitting it into the Houston Knight for a walk-off, pennant-clinching two-run homer, leaving Chapman helpless on the mound, someone who could only smile and watch the Yankees season come crashing down in front of him. Not long after, the Yankees and Chapman agreed to make some changes to his contract, restructuring it to a three-year deal worth $48 million. In 2020, Chapman Chapman, due to the shortened season and catching the virus, was limited to just over 11 innings during the regular season, with things getting a little spicy at one point after Chapman threw over the head of Rays infielder Mike Brasso, foreshadowing an epic postseason showdown. In October of 2020, the Yankees faced off against the Rays, and prior to the decisive Game 5, Chapman had thrown three and a third scoreless innings that postseason. Then came Game 5. With the game tied at 1 in the bottom of the 8th, Rosso would battle Chapman in a 10-pitch at-bat that resulted in a home run, putting the Rays on top, and three outs later, the Yankees' season was over. That was now two years in a row, where Chapman gave up the winning runs to the opposing team in their clincher. Ouch. Well, there's always next year. Unfortunately for Chapman, he hasn't really truly ever recovered. In 2021, Chapman had an insanely good first half, or at least first couple months. In his first 18 appearances, Chapman pitched to a zero ERA, like he didn't give up any runs in exactly 18 innings, striking out 36 hitters. And then he had an enormous drop off. You gotta question if Chapman's downfall partly had to do with the foreign substance ban, but regardless of what it was, he fell off hard, pitching to an ERA of about 5 the rest of the season as the Yankees would go on to be one and done, losing to the Red Sox in the wildcard game. As for 2022, it was easily the worst year in Aroldis Chapman's career. Like, it's not even close. Throughout the 2022 season, Chapman struggled badly, losing his closer role at one point to Clay Holmes, someone who had a really dominant run before coming back to reality, but a reliable Chapman was still nowhere to be found, literally and figuratively. In 36 and a third innings, Chapman pitched to an ERA around four and a half, walking 28 hitters, surrendering four home runs, and put up a wins above replacement of negative 0.2, meaning he brought negative value to the Yankees as a team and would have been better off just not pitching at all. And well, that's exactly what ended up happening by season's end. New York won their division, winning 99 games, and despite Chapman's struggles throughout the season, he was still expected to try and contribute during the postseason. That is until he was practically kicked off the team. After missing a mandatory team workout at Yankee Stadium, the Yankees informed Chapman, who was down in Florida, that he would not appear on the Yankees American League Division Series roster, with the team also fining him an undisclosed amount. The Yankees ended up beating Cleveland in the first round and taking on the Astros for ALCS Round 3, only to be swept. And with that, Aroldis Chapman's career in pinstripes was potentially done. From one of, nah, scratch that. From the best and richest closer in baseball to what he is now, Aroldis Chapman is not the same pitcher he once was. That doesn't take away the dominance he's shown throughout his career, but it's pretty crazy to see the downfall that he's had. And you gotta wonder if he ever gets back to that vintage form, or at least partially back to that vintage form.